Hello, everyone. Today, we embark on a transformative journey with Summit Consulting. In the ever-evolving business landscape, adaptability is not just an advantage, it's a necessity for survival and success. We at Summit Consulting are honored to guide your organization through this profound transformation. Our engagement is fueled by the imperative vision set forth by your CEO, a vision to shift the organizational culture from an authoritarian command and control approach to one that is highly collaborative, respectful, team focused, and positively oriented. This change isn't merely a choice, it's a strategic necessity for the future of your business. Who are we at Summit Consulting? We bring a team of dedicated and experienced professionals with a proven track record of driving transformative change across diverse industries. Our mission is clear, to guide and empower organizations to reach their summit by embracing change as an opportunity for growth. Our team is committed to facilitating this monumental cultural shift, integrating it seamlessly into your organization's DNA. Over the course of the next year, we will partner closely with your leadership, employees, and stakeholders to guide this transformation. Our aim is to make this journey as smooth and successful as possible with your organization emerging stronger and more adaptive than ever before. Here, you will see a brief overview of the roadmap for our presentation today. So now, Let's go ahead and get into the significance of the change management plan. Um, the approach that we have selected is rooted in the well-established Cotter eight-step model. Uh, the Cotter eight-step model is a compass for a journey toward a more agile, uh, harmonious, and productivity-driven productivity organizational culture. It's not just a transformation. Um, it is a revolution that aligns your organization with the emerging paradigms of the business world. Uh, by shifting the culture to be more collaborative, respectful, and team focused, your company will not only become a more attractive place to work, uh, but it will also enhance productivity and innovation within the working environment. This isn't an end in itself, but rather a means to thrive in an environment marked by constant change, an investment in the resilience, sustainability, and competitiveness of your organization. So when selecting a change model, we knew we needed to present to you a transformative approach that will undoubtedly reshape the future of your organization. At Summit Consulting, we firmly believe that change is not just an inevitability, but an opportunity for growth and improvement. The key to unlocking this potential lies in a proven and impactful model, the Cotter's eight-step model. Let's explore how Cotter's model aligns with your specific needs. First, establishing a sense of urgency is paramount to mobilize your organization in recognizing the imperatives for change, particularly concerning high turnover and declining profitability. The creation of a guiding coalition uniting various departments and collaborative efforts becomes the linchpin in effectively addressing issues related to turnover, morale, and managerial behaviors. A compelling vision coupled with a strategic drive is the heartbeat of Cotter's plan, a pulse, for your a pulse your company needs right now. This vision propels a strategy aimed at promoting a positive culture and aligning managerial behaviors with your organization's core values. However, for this vision to materialize, communication becomes the catalyst. In step five, Cotter's model underscores the need for clear and articulate communication to ensure buy-in and address workforce concerns. Removing obstacles to change is the next critical step. In your case, empowering morale and productivity. Providing necessary resources and supports becomes the bedrock for successful implementation. To maintain momentum, the celebration of early victories is imperative showcasing tangible improvements in managerial behaviors, morale, or initial productivity enhancements. Yet the journey does not end here. Cotter's, 
final step highlights the continuous reinforcement of change to embed it within the cultural, the organizational culture. Ongoing commitment to the goals of reducing turnover, enhancing morale, and fostering positive managerial behaviors is a non-negotiable. Throughout this process, it is imperative that senior leaders are aligned with the vision, requiring concerted efforts to secure their commitment at each step of the transformative journey. It is clear that this model is not near, merely a theoretical thing, framework, but a pragmatic guide that will lead your organization to a successful and enduring change. As this plan unfolds, we will ensure that the winds of change propel us forward, united in a commitment to a better, brighter future for your organization. So when looking at the steps at Cotter's eight-step model, the first one is to increase urgency by convincing key stakeholders that change is necessary communicating the need for change and the potential consequences of an action. Next is building the guiding team. To assemble a team of influential and committed individuals to lead the change effort and ensure that the coalition represents various areas and levels within the organization. Third is to get the vision right. Develop a clear and compelling vision for the future by outlining specific initiatives that will help achieve the vision. The fourth step is to communicate for buy-in. Communicate the vision and strategy widely. Encourage employees at all levels to actively participate in the change process. The fourth step, or the fifth step is to remove obstacles and empower action. Identify and eliminate obstacles to change and empower employees by providing the necessary tools and resources they will need. The sixth step is to create short-term wins. Plan and celebrate early successes. Use these victories to build momentum and demonstrate the benefits of the change. The step seven is don't let up. Reinforce the changes and integrate them into the organizational culture. Address any remaining resistance and continue to build on the momentum. The final step is to make change stick. Anchor the changes in the organization's policies, procedures, and structures, and ensure that the new practices become the standard way of operating. This model emphasizes the importance of engaging people throughout the organization, creating a shared vision, and addressing both the emotional and practical aspects of change. It provides a structured approach for leaders to guide their teams throughout the challenges of organizational transformation. So to get the stakeholders involved, we will be using techniques like consultation, collaboration, and communication to um, engage with and create smoother transitions for groups like senior leadership, management, HR, and the employees, um, and to gain buy-in. So consultation is going to apply more for senior leadership, but it'll still work for the other levels too. We're going to bring the proposed changes and ask the groups for feedback, suggestions, if they have their own proposals. This is also going to help us gauge kind of where they stand. And it's going to move into the collaboration pretty easily as we want the groups to collaborate in actually making the decisions and moving forward with the plans. So of course, like HR specific changes are going to have HR collaborating more and like the widespread ones will have senior leadership, but everyone's still going to be able to to offer their input um, and perspectives for everything because they do impact each other as well. And the idea is that by collaborating and not like directly implementing a plan, which the managers did report that senior leadership's usually taken like a more harsh and demanding approach, we can try to create a more positive attitude um, that everyone feels a sense of ownership in. The active participation should also help the issue of like mixed feelings between senior leadership and also the low employee morale because the stakeholder groups are going to like work together and come up with these ideas themselves and talk to each other and by hearing all the perspectives in one place it makes it easier for them to kind of understand each other's point of view um the need of change uh, the need for change and accept the decisions that they're going to make especially because they're going to be part of making the decisions themselves and that's going to help create stronger buy-in for that unified goal and then the last thing, really important, communication. The, we're going to set up a communication plan that's a bit more formal where each group receives their department relevant, like department relevant information, um, kind of more on a, like a daily basis, and then progress reports um, for like the whole department and organization, maybe like weekly, and a general overview updating everyone on the process and like any other big changes or accomplishments. Um, a little less often or just as they happen. It's important that all the communication between 
like the groups themselves so like all the senior leadership people within each other and then also between the groups um like between senior leadership management hr and the employees of all the other countries is frequent enough that it they can all be on the same page and like catch everyone up and also so that things are brought to people's attention so that they can like point out any um potential issues they see or anything quickly um without causing too much of like stress on having to fix things after the fact um but they also shouldn't be so frequent that it like confuses them on what they're doing too but by sharing all these updates and proposed changes with each other um we can build trust the open and regular, you know, transparent communication is also going to allow for all the different groups to um, speak up sooner and speak up more to address any, like, issues that they might see um, coming up. Like, oh, that might work for you guys, but for our department, like, that might cause issues for us. So by making sure that we're communicating that over different departments and um, groups, we allow for that to be caught more um, sooner. So obviously it's going to include two-way communication and it's not just for feedback, it's also for recognition. Um, it'll include like informal communications as well as formal like letters and surveys. And overall, it's just to help set clear expectations from all the groups for what has already happened and then also what is going to happen. And like I said, that's going to be like daily, weekly, depending on what we're talking about. Um, it also opens the door for people to um, ask for resources and support when and where they're needed. It's going to help speed up the process in general because there's going to be less over uh, less road bumps and create um, just overall success. And I think it's important to note here, though, that it's really important to not just stick to like emails or formal with their you need in person meetings, too. And we can't have it all focus on like what's been done or what's going to happen. It, it has to include both sides of the progress and you can't stick to just feedback and complaints but you also have to recognize successes and the progress that you're making too it's going to help create a sense of ownership positive attitudes and buy-in especially as we pair it with um, the consultation and collaboration so the inclusion of union considerations uh, within our present presentation stems from the crucial role that unions play in representing the safeguarding of uh, the rights of the workforce. Um, for Summit Consulting, addressing these union concerns and collaborating effectively with uh, representatives of the unions is essential for managing a successful cultural transformation within um, any given unionized environment. The significance lies in recognizing that unionized workforces process unique dynamics, which require a delicate balance between cultural evolution, as well as the protection of job security and worker rights. Integrating strategies tailored to engage and collaborate with union representatives ensures that our change initiatives resonate uh, resonate positively uh, within the workforce while uh, while aligning with legal obligations and also collective bargaining agreements. Um, three of the primary union considerations have been highlighted on this slide. These are three uh, amongst many other which are presented in the report. Uh, the first of which is early engagement and communication. Um, this involves initiating transparent communication early on uh, by outlining the rationale, objectives, and benefits of the cultural shift at hand. It also involves establishing a collaborative dialogue to address concerns and gather input from uh, key union members. Second is um, compliance with legal requirements. Um, the idea is to ensure full compliance with legal regulations and collective bargaining agreements, as well as to work closely with legal advisors to navigate potential challenges. Um, finally, uh, training and development programs. Um, training and development programs will be designed to specialize 
and focus on essential skills for the new and forthcoming culture. Um, the programs must emphasize the positive impact on job satisfaction and career growth. Moving on, challenges are inevitable. Um, however, so are solutions. As such, we've identified many potential challenges as well as corresponding um, uh, mitigations and solutions to these challenges. Um, the challenges stem from internal resistance to concerns regarding cultural integration. And each of our mitigation strategies are tailored specifically to the firm's climate as it relates to each issue. Um, again, we have highlighted two here on this slide deck amongst many which are uh, formally presented in the report. Uh, the first challenge uh, pertains to employee morale. Low morale during initial change efforts uh, can pose a hurdle to successful transformation. Mitting the mitigation approach would be to boost morale by implementing target initiatives uh, aimed at uplifting employee spirits. Recognition programs and team building activities will be introduced to infuse positivity and also to develop a sense of belonging in the work environment and work culture. Continuous monitoring of employee sentiment will enable prompt resolution of concerns. These efforts aim not only to address immediate morale issues, but also to instill confidence in employees regarding the positive outcomes of the cultural transformation. The second presented challenge uh, pertains to resistance from internal leadership and management. Um, again, potential resistance from entrenched leaders and managers who are accustomed to an authoritarian culture. Our mitigation approach to this challenge involves direct engagement of said leaders and managers. Um, Summit Consulting adopts a proactive strategy targeting leaders and managers. Uh, in tailored leadership workshops, uh, which are personalized one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, these sessions aim to showcase the inherent benefits of the new culture while directly addressing concerns. Uh, additionally, senior leaders will be engaged as change champions, tasked with modeling and advocating the desired behaviors. This approach not only addresses resistance, um, but also leverages leadership influence to catalyze cultural change throughout the organization. Um, again, these focused strategies uh, aim to target specific challenges encountered during organizational change, all of which showcase Summit Consulting's tailored approach in mitigating hurdles for a smoother transition. Okay, so looking at the step-by-step plan overview um, to implement this change in month one, we would be communicating with leadership and employees an overview of the change and communicate why it's important. So looking at um, the initial steps of what change needs to happen, getting employee feedback as well as leadership feedback. Month two would be to delegate specific employees and leaders to act as champions for the success of the change implementation. So this would be a change action group that would be responsible for ensuring that the company is on, on, um, on track to implement the, the change um, and then also looking at any ways that they could improve it. Months three and four would be consisting of consulting with employees and leaders of various departments to finalize the change that will be implemented as well as to show how um, the procedures in the organization may change. Months five and six would be to unveil the change to all employees and start implementing the change um, in their daily task and their expectations. This is also where the organization would open channels for employees to submit feedback. So if they have any concerns or any ways that they think that the um, change could be implemented more effectively, this is the way that they could do that. 
uh, months seven and eight would be to really focus on leaderships and leadership empowering employees through the change, ensuring that they have the adequate um, ability to communicate concerns and have a clear understanding of expectations. Um, this is also the time where senior staff would work at the strengths and we weaknesses of the change and adjust where necessary. Um, months 9 through 14 will be where leadership continues to monitor employee success through things like dialogues um, and those feedback channels. Look at what has been working, what hasn't to make any adjustments. Um, and then this is also where that team dedicated to the change will be dissolved um, and that burden will be placed mostly on leadership. Um, and lastly, leadership would continue to reinforce the change. Um, to ensure that all of the employees are fitting their new expectations. And then beyond that, um, beyond those 14 months, it would be best practice to continue looking for quality talent that meets the needs of the company now and also uh, matches that culture. Um, so some sample key metrics would be, um, for instance, making sure that production is at 85% efficiency, um, customer satisfaction is about above 90%, employee satisfaction above 80%, and then keeping the turnover below the 10% industry average. Um, and then to further evaluate whether or not the change has been successful, um, leadership should be able to use things like the timeline to ensure that the company is following the desired timeline for the implementation of the change, um, and also ensuring that all the employees are on a similar trajectory to um, fully implement the change into their daily tasks. Um, looking at culture, so understanding how the company culture may be shifting to accept the change, or if there are any opportunities um, for leadership to um, support employees further to ensure that the um, culture is shifting the way that they um, are looking for. And then lastly, um, results, so this would be KPIs, um, things like production, employee satisfaction, and customer satisfaction to ensure that the um, company is following the, the guidelines that they put in place at the beginning and making sure that they're continuing to be successful. And with that, I'll just pass it along for stakeholder engagement. 